I don't even have to tell you. I mean, I would say it, but I do not even have to say it because y'all already know it's Wednesday. That's the reason why you're here. And we are here for Face It With The Father. I am Minister Kevin D. Jones Sr. I'm here with my brother from another mother, Larry Bernard Jr. He is the podcast and the producer. <laughs> podcast and the producer of this biblical movement and we want to welcome you to face it with the father face it with the father is a biblically based movement where we strive to face real world circumstances through the greatest lens uh, that we've ever had in our lives that is the word of god today we're going to face i can't believe we haven't faced this before but we're going to face rejection with the father let's go Welcome you back to uh, Face It With The Father. As stated today, we are facing rejection with the Father. Uh, rejection is a real world fear. Rejection is crippling. Rejection will cause mighty men and women to hinder from doing the things that they would do in fear of this thing. Uh, we all know rejection. We're familiar with it. You think about it back in grade school, you saw the young lady you like, you want to go uh, ask her to be your girlfriend, you write your letter out, you put check yes, check no, uh, and, and you fold it up, you know the style where you wrap it, fold it, tuck it, uh, you get ready to walk it over there to her, your palms are sweaty, you got uh, your heart's beating fast, and why is that? It's not because you're asking a question, you ask questions all day. Can I have another scoop of cereal? Uh, can I go outside to play? You ask questions all day long. It's not that you're fearing asking a question. You fear rejection. Dr. Guy Winch wrote a book called Emotional First Aid. And in that book, he details how the brain neurological patterns of rejections are very similar to that of physical pain, that of blunt force trauma, how the brain responds to pain, it responds in like manner to rejection. Rejection is crippling. Rejection will halt you. Rejection can shut you down. So we figure if we're ever going to face anything, we ought to face rejection with the Father. Disclaimer, today we're going to face rejection from a perspective that every child of God will face, and that is the rejection that you face for striving to live a life for God. That's right. Living a godly existence, living a life for the Lord will promote rejection in your life. Now, I want you to understand that the feelings of rejection, no matter what the cause, no matter what the stimuli is, rejection still feels crippling. So as the urge to move in a different manner in rejection would be in any other method, it is the same for the child of God. That is the young man who likes the young lady. And he has the letter and it may take him weeks, months to begin to build up the courage to ask her. So what is he doing? He is cruising in comfort because he wants to stave off rejection and the feeling thereof. I want you to know that the child of God, if they know that there is a measure of rejection for living a life that glorifies God, it becomes very convenient, uh, almost natural for that very same child of God to begin to live a double life life so that they won't feel the rejection. We do not want to live that existence. That existence is a disgrace to the cross. It is beneath your new calling and it is a gamble with your eternity. So we want to face rejection with the father and we want to understand how can we walk, move and exist in this time side of life, knowing the realities of rejection. To get that, I want you to meet me, if you will, in first Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two, we're looking together at verses four 
through eight. Peter writes to us here. Uh, Peter is writing a phenomenal letter uh, to the pilgrims of the dispersion, those that have been scattered as a means of evading persecution. He says these words in Second Peter chapter, First uh, Peter rather, chapter two, verses four through eight. He says, coming to him as to a lively, to a living stone, rather, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scriptures. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is, the Bible says, precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. Pray with me, if you will. King Jesus, guide us in our study. Dear Lord, help us to encounter your word with the desire of not just hearing your word, but receiving your word. Dear Lord, we do not desire to simply be informed. We want to be transformed. Bless us in every way that you that you have so richly blessed us in past, dear Lord. And please guide your manservant as I share your word with your people. Bless those who receive your word in a mighty way to know that if they are encouraged by this message, that none of the praise belongs to the preacher. All the praise belongs to you. These and all prayers we ask in your son Jesus name we pray. Let us all say amen. Uh, Peter begins to invite us into a, a new perspective of how we ought to see rejection. Rejection as a child of God is a real world thing. Make no mistake about it. Once you decide that you're going to stand on principle, you're going to stand on biblical principles, you're going to stand on righteousness, you're going to stand against the wave of what may be the norm or the secularly accepted thing. Once you make that decision up in your mind, you can guarantee uh, that there are going to be some obstacles for you. Peter is guiding us into a renewed concept of how we ought to experience this concept this thing called rejection. Meet me, if you will, in verse number four. Uh, the Bible says, coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. So much wonderful is happening in that passage. But the thing that I want you to gather first is I want you to gather the depths of what he's saying. He's suggesting coming to him, coming to him, the Bible says, as to, as to a living stone. The coming to him details the approach. It details how we encounter him. This is how we approach the Lord. This is how we enter into his presence. To gather the depth of that, you'd have to get verses one through three. Slide your finger right up to verses one through three. First Peter chapter two, verses one through three, the Bible says, therefore laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him, the Bible says, as to a living stone rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. Now, what he's gathering this painting for us to appreciate what's going on in verses one through three, it's, it, it's, it's important that you gather the substance of verse four. We come to him as living stones. He is the stone that was rejected by men. Now we have to ask ourselves, why was Christ rejected by men? Well, Christ was rejected by men because he lived his life 
not in the fulfillment of his will. He lived his life in the fulfillment of the Lord's will. That is, while the while the man Jesus Christ was in the midst of our space called earth, he was not here to do his own desire, but to fulfill the desire of God. It was in his commitment to walk in agreement with the calling of God that caused for him, as verse number four righteously says, to be rejected by men. Well, why was he rejected by men? Pay very close attention. He was rejected by men because he maintained and he achieved the father's will. This is important to know as we unpack how Peter says we ought to come to him. He says we ought to come to him. He starts off by saying in verse number one that we ought to lay aside a host of sin, those things that are unrighteous. We've got to get that stuff out of our lives. And in verse number two, he then tells us that we need to now have a passion for the word of God, because it is the word of God that causes us to be informed and transformed. And he says we ought to do this if we have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. So what is he telling us in verse number three? He's telling us in verse number three that my righteousness, my goodness, my goodness is really a demonstration of my gratitude. That is, I'm striving to live for God as I should because God's been so good to me. Somebody said, I thought we were talking about rejection. Stay with me. I'll be where you want me after a while. But I am striving, he says, I'm striving. If I have seen the goodness of God, if I know that he's better than good, if I know that he wakes me up daily, if I know that he has blessed me to start my life, if I know that he has given me a roof over my head and food in my fridge, clothes on my back, money to pay my bills. If I know that God has done all these wonderful things for me, he's telling me now that I should come to him as a living stone. I should approach him with the posture of one that is lively in agreement with his will. How do you know that? Pay close attention to the concept of the stone. We'll get to that more. But the thing that I really want Want you to gather is that the Bible says in verse number four that we come to him with a capital H as living stones, little l, little s, that's us, uh, rejected indeed by men. That is, he strived to fulfill his father's will. And we're striving to move in agreement with the father's will. And in his fulfillment of the father's will, he was rejected by men. He informs us that in the fulfillment of our father's will, we too will be rejected by men. But but what is the solace for the child of God? Because make no mistake about it. We were exact when we said that rejection feels painful. So what is it that keeps you going? What is it that enables the young lady who makes up her mind that she's going to honor God and maintain her celibacy, even though the young man that she's dating wants her to be sexually active? And what is it that causes the young child of God on the job not to get involved with the gossip circle and to bad mouth the boss, but to strive to be a model representative of the Lord? And what is it that causes the child of God to make up their mind that they won't go with the sway of the crowd or do what everyone else is doing, but they're willing to stand distinct and alone? He says that he was rejected by men, but look very closely at verse number four. He was chosen by God and precious. And what I invite you to understand, my brothers and my sisters, is you've got to ask yourself, are you in a place where you find substance in the fact that you are chosen with God? How do I find substance? How do I find, how do I find meaning? How do I find value in the fact that I've been chosen by God? I would tell you this much. I find substance when I'm chosen with God, chosen by God, when my relationship with God is not just a religious one. It is not just a ritual one, but it is a relational one. You know what I'm talking about. It's the reason why uh, whether you connect with the bank, uh, the banker at the bank, uh, it doesn't really blow your mind, but you certainly want to connect with your spouse. You certainly want to connect with your parents. And the reason why is because there is a relationship there. And once you get to the place where you are past just engaging God in a ritualistic manner, but you have a relationship with him, you talk intimately with him. You are intimate with him. You pray with faith to him. You, you pour your heart out to him. You are investigating his word. You're wanting to know more about him. You want to trust him, walk with him, move in agreement with him. Once you find that this portion of your life 
is transformed. You get to a place where you move in relationship with God. He says that, yes, he was rejected by men, but he didn't mind being rejected by men because he knows that he was chosen by God. And I counter to you, people of God, that we will never get to a place where we value being chosen by God and we'll never get to a place where we don't mind being rejected by men in as much as we are chosen by God if we don't get to a space where we walk in relationship with God. That is, I want to move in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable to God. I want to live a life that brings glory and honor to God. The question would be asked, well, well, tell me, preacher, how do we move forward in light of this information? How do we walk in a space where I begin to embrace being rejected by men and rest in being elect by God? Well, we'll unpack that more after we come back from this message. Stay with us. Welcome to the mirror. This is a prayer devotion provided to you by Face It With The Father. The goal of the mirror is while we face all things in life with the Father, our desire is to look at ourselves through the glance of the Word of God and prayer. Join us weekly in the mirror as we face life strategies with the Father, but with also a self-reflective view from the Word. So the question is, well, I want to I want to get to that place. I want to get to, to the point where I value being chosen by God so much that I don't mind being rejected by men and make no mistake about it. One of the reasons why we move in comfort, one of the reasons why we move in comfort is because we have not rested in the value of what it is to feel the feelings of rejection. So what is the Lord calling us to do? Well, he's calling us to imitate Christ. Pay very close attention. Watch in verse number five. I'm going to give you verse four and five. Verse number four, the Bible says coming to him as to a living stone rejected indeed by men. But the Bible says chosen by God and precious. But you also as living stones, that living stone appearing twice. We're seeing that so much are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Did you see that? Did you see that? You see, something powerful happens in verse number five. Verse number four, we learned that Christ was rejected by men and chosen by God. Well, why was Christ rejected by men? Christ was rejected by men because he lived his life in fulfillment of his father's will. It is not coincidence, it is providence that he says to us in verses one through three, if we're gonna get sin out of our lives, if we're gonna receive the word, if we know that God is good, then we ought to do exactly what Christ did. And that is, he tells us in verse number five, that we ought to offer our very own sacrifices as a holy priesthood acceptable to God. What does that mean? That means I too have to be about the business just as Christ was of seeking to dedicate my life to fulfilling the will of God no matter what. So what does that mean? Well, I'll tell you what it means. It means that if Christ was rejected by men for doing the will of his father, then you and I should certainly expect the same. That is, it is healthy for the child of God to make up in their mind that you will say this with me. I will be rejected. I will be rejected. Not that I might be rejected or I could be rejected. No, I will be rejected. And we want to face that with boldness and we want to face it with audacity. Christ would talk to us in the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter. Turn there with me, if you will. And the Lord was talking to his disciples and he's essentially preparing them for the fulfillment of what he already knows is on the way. Starting at verse number 18 in John chapter 15, the Bible says, if the world hates you, 
You know that it hated me, capital M, before it hated you. Christ says, if you're going through some tough times in this world, just understand that I was going through it far more than you ever would. He says in verse number 19, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I, the Bible says, chose you. What is it to be chosen? Praise God. I chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Remember the word that I said, a servant is not greater than his master. If they, the Bible says, persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. Christ was getting his disciples to open their minds to the fact that is we cannot avoid rejection. We have to expect rejection. Rejection is guaranteed. Rejection is on the way. But I know what you're thinking. I know rejection is on the way, but rejection is still rejection. And you've got to pause there and you've got to receive that in your humanity because rejection will cause us to do things that we normally wouldn't do. It comes to my mind. I remember when I was early beginning my walk with Christ and, and I, I, I had really uh, not not that I was early beginning my walk with Christ. I had been walking with him for a time. Uh, but some of you all know what I mean when I say I hadn't been walking faithful. Right. So I made up my mind. I was a, I was a private in the army. I was in Fort Polk, Louisiana. I made up my mind. I said, no, it's time for me to get serious. And there were some guys in my unit. We would go out every weekend and we would, you know, we'd go out and we would do things that had nothing to do with the righteousness of God. But I made up my mind. I said, you know what? I'm going to strive. I'm going to strive my very best to remain faithfully committed to the cross. Well, what started to happen was I told these guys, I said, hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm not going anymore. I'm going to start going to church. I'm going to really start giving my life fully to Christ. And they didn't believe me at first, but I started to get committed to it. Well, what happened is slowly but surely the gap between me and them started to spread. That is, I started to find myself weekend after weekend all by myself self and lonely. And I'll tell you, lonely is a tough place to be because lonely will have you crippled or to have you wanting to go back. And I noticed that the friends that I thought I had, once I decided that I wasn't going to do what I had been doing, they had started to put some distance from me. And I will tell you the truth. And I will not lie to you. I was this close in the early stages of my walk to throwing it all away, to literally abandoning my walk with God just because I despised and it hurt being rejected and being alone. I'm so glad that instead of abandoning the faith, I took advantage of that time and I started to become engrafted with the word of God. I started to begin to dig into the word of God and study the word of God. I got connected with the church family. I started to regain relationships that were building me up in the faith. And what I found was the only way I would ever, the only way I would ever stifle this feeling of being rejected by men was I had to get to a place where I was digging deeper in my relationship with God. I'm telling you, if you're ever going to counter the feelings of being rejected by men, you will only do it when you dig deeper in your relationship with God. The difference between you making up your mind that you're not going to go out drinking with the fellas and staying committed to it is you've got to dig deep in your relationship with God. The young man who decides that he's not going to continue to live promiscuous and the young lady who's not going to continue to seek sexual gratification. How is he going to stave that off? How is he going to push that away? How's he going to walk in that newness of separation? How's he going to entertain the rejecting of the old way? He's going to have to, she is going to have to dig into a deep relational state with the word of God. When I start to make up my mind that I start to stand on issues and people look at me like I'm narrow minded and they look at me like I'm foolish and they look at me like I'm brainwashed and they start talking about, oh, here he goes or her, here she goes with all that religious talk. How am I going to stand? I will only be able to stand when I am in a deep relationship with God. He calls them. If they understand that he was rejected for fulfilling the father's will, it is only commonplace that he would righteously expect the same thing from us. Nonetheless, Appreciate what he tells us in verse number six. We're back at first Peter chapter two. Uh, the time is not my friend. The Bible says in verse number six, therefore, it is also contained in the scriptures. 
Behold, I lay in Zion, the Bible says, a chief cornerstone. It says, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. What's his point to us? Yeah, here's what he's telling us. He's telling us that if we make up our minds that we too want to live like Jesus did and Jesus lived his life in the fulfillment of his heavenly father's will. And if I make up my mind that I'm going to dedicate my life to living in fulfillment of my heavenly father's will. Once I make that decision up in my mind, I have to welcome being rejected. But what he's encouraging me to know in verse number six, it says, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. I thank God for the fact that yes, I may be rejected, but I am not dejected. And what that means is I may be pushed off for man, but I'm not cast out altogether. I find great solace, great peace in knowing that there is a there is an important measure of value for standing for God. And we have to make up in our minds that we're going to stand for God. There's only one reason why a person in the face of divine rejection would turn from God. And it's because we're seeking relationship somewhere else. No wonder Paul would tell us, watch him in Galatians chapter one. Paul talks to us in Galatians chapter one and, 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 and we've unpacked this passage before. But Paul, he helps us in Galatians chapter one in verse number 10. He says, for do I now persuade men or God or do I seek to please men? He says, for if I still pleased men, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. The separating difference, the thing that will help you to stand in the face of rejection is you have to have a relational, not a religious, not a ritualistic, uh, but you have to have a relational connection with God. There has to be intimacy with him. You have to have a space where the void that you feel when man pushes you out, you're all right because God has filled you up and he is standing in the gap. He is your friend when you don't have a friend. It's the reason why John could say, I'm in the spirit of the Lord on the Lord's day. He's stranded on the Isle of Patmos, but he's all right. And how is he all right? He's all right because he says, I may not have man and I may not have women and I, I may not have people, but I certainly have God and God has a connection with me that is inseparable and it is unmatched. We praise God for his goodness. We wrap it up with verses seven and eight. The Bible says these words, it says, therefore to him who believe, therefore rather to you, rather who believe he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they were also appointed. They also were appointed. You see, the men that are even rejecting you, God is letting you know that he's there to receive them. And you have to understand that the call of Christ is on your life and it's what's provoking you. It's what's moving you. It's what's compelling you uh, to face these manners of rejection. So what do we understand? We understand that rejection is guaranteed. It's on the way. And if you're going to face rejection, ensure that you're facing it for the right reason. Ensure that you're facing it for the righteous cause of Christ. First Peter chapter four, verses 15 and 18, as we get ready to close, the Bible says these words. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, the Bible says, an evildoer or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed but let him glorify God in this manner. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. Family, let's face rejection with the Father. 
It's not about if you are rejected. It's about when you are rejected and that your rejection is certainly on the way. There is no way in the world you're going to satisfy everybody and stand faithfully with God. No, you're going to ruffle some feathers. You're going to make somebody upset and you just got to receive that. We don't strive to do it with a space of malice or hatred. We just understand that, yea, do I become your enemy because I share with you the truth. And if that is the cause, we have to understand that that rejection is still it's painful. It will cause us in fear of it to start to live in opposite of it. That is, I'll start to find myself doing things that would cause the rejection not to be in my life so that I don't have to feel that pain. I want to make up my mind that I'm going to glorify God and serve him no matter what. Let us pray. King Jesus, we come to you at this time with our heads humbly bowed. And Lord, we just want to thank you. We thank you because you've been better than good. Lord, there is no one who loves us, who cares for us quite like you. Lord, we ask even now that you would just bless us as we strive to grow in your will, word and way. Dear Lord, strengthen us as we face day to day rejection for our call to live a life pleasing and acceptable to you. Lord, we know that no matter how hard we try, no matter how much we push, we're going to find opposition in this time side of life. But dear Lord, we pray that you would strengthen us and keep us so that in the space of all the trouble we endure, we know that if you stand for us, there is no entity that could ever stand against us. Lord, we thank you. We praise your name and we love you. These are all prayers we ask in your son Jesus name. We pray. Let us all say amen. Well, that wraps it up. We thank you as always for blessing us, stopping in to be with us here at Facing with the Father. Uh, would you please support the effort? Uh, visit us, www.fiwtf.com. There, uh, we'd love some support from you. A couple of things that you could do. Maybe you'd like to support us monetarily. There's a donate link. We appreciate whatever gift that you can give in support of the ministry and effort of us sharing the word uh, in this format. Maybe you're not able to support us monetarily. Well, there's a number of ways that you can help us. Would you right now share this podcast with someone that you know and love? Let them know about it. The words of my friend, Minister Harrell Hinton, he says, if you care, you'll share or open up your podcast app, search for the following hashtag F-I-W-T-F or G-S-B, which stands for God Strikes Back or PPCC TV. Those are all of the podcasts that we have in the podcast app. Would you give us a five star rating and please leave a comment? We'd love to hear from you. And it's what enables more of our listeners to tune in uh, to what we're sharing on that digital platform. Check us out on social media. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter at F-I-W-T-F. And you can find us on Facebook searching Face It With The Father uh, in that platform. Support Pembroke Park Church of Christ. Uh, you can find us on social media at Pembroke Park COC. And uh, you can find us by searching Pembroke Park Church of Christ on Facebook. The website is www.pembrokeparkcoc.com. On behalf of my brother from another mother, Larry Bernard Jr., the saints of the Pembroke Park Church of Christ, and myself, Minister Kevin D. Jones Sr., we thank you for stopping in with us week after week here at Face It With The Father. Listen, listen, listen. This life, man, is something else. You're going to face them highs, lows, ups, downs, goods and bads. But whatever you face, ensure to face it with the Father. Take care and be blessed.